All right, hello everybody, and um, welcome to something very exciting. If you've been paying attention for a little while, you might know that I've been working on something pretty big. A documentary-style video looking back at the impact of NFTs and the rise of crypto uh, on us as horror enthusiasts, using uh, the Hellraiser NFTs that were made in part by Behaviors Involvement, and the CryptTV NFT project Monster Fight Club as my key case studies. Uh, because I was making a big old video and a lot of it was being focused on Crypt, I decided that I wanted to give Crypt the chance to comment like a journalist would. And so I contacted Alyssa, somebody who I knew from Crypt. Um, she'd seen what I've done before for Crypt, and I've even been on stream with her a couple of times, playing Dead by Daylight with her. Uh, so I was on pretty good terms with her, and I hoped that I'd be able to at least get some sort of feedback from Crypt. Maybe a uh, written response or a little... Um, little missive I could put in the video to give them a chance to comment and have a little bit of time in the sun. What I did not expect was this. Crypt TV CEO Jack Davis messaged me on Twitter about a week later and said about arranging an interview. So that's what this is. Um, this isn't the full documentary, it isn't even close. Uh, but I thought this would do with being released separately. Because I should imagine a lot of Crypt TV fans will want to uh, get some closure about what happened back in February in the North NFT project. And this is Jack's first time speaking on it publicly since it all went down. So I decided to put it separately so that if you're just interested in Crypt TV stuff, you can view the this interview completely separately. Without having to deal with my preambles about NFT stuff and Hellraiser and all that sort of thing. You can just watch the Crypt TV stuff if you want to. And that's what's right here. In terms of the full video, if you want a more detailed analysis of everything that happened with Crypt and the wider NFT sphere in general around that time, talking about how it impacted horror, uh, the video to uh, talk about that in full is currently in production. So consider this a kind of teaser for what's coming. I do hope this interview is enlightening. Uh, it was certainly enlightening for me to have talked to Jack and I'll say this, from what I knew of the guy, this really wasn't what I expected. And I mean that in a good way. So thank you much for Jack uh, taking the time to do this. He really didn't have to do it. And I hope everybody who had some issues with the way that Crypt handled things back during the Monster Fight Club project launch uh, and has some questions, have them answered in this video. So thank you so much. I hope this is enlightening for you and over to past me. Thanks future me for introducing this one. Um, and we're here today with Jack Davis, the CEO of Crypt TV. It is great to see you here, even though, uh, you know, we're far apart. It's great to be connected. Hands reaching out across the Atlantic. Yeah. Well, uh, could you start out by telling us a little bit about um, Crypt TV, what you do, and specifically if you can relate to the Monster Fight Club project? Right. So Crypt TV was founded in 2015. And I always think that we didn't really find our footing until 2017. But Crypt was, you know, wants to be Marvel for monsters, right? We want to create IP on the internet uh, that can turn into great monster IP, that can turn into TV or movies or video games or live events. So we started in 2015. In 2017, I feel like we started to get our footing. Some of the videos that are popular, like the Birch or the Looksy, came out in 2017. That's when we really started developing this idea of Marvel for monsters. Um, we grew YouTube and Facebook pretty steadily in 2017 and 18. Starting in 2018 or 19, we started to have some problems with YouTube, which I might eventually touch on in our chat. And in 2020 and 2021, the focus really became TV for the reasons I mentioned with YouTube. It became unsustainable for us to really build a business on YouTube. Um, so we pivoted, we made five shows for Facebook Watch, we made a show for Peacock, Girl in the Woods, based on our IP, and then we have done some IP partnerships with Halloween Horror Nights and Dead by Daylight, where our IP has been featured in Dead by Daylight, the video game, and Halloween Horror Nights, the live event. And we announced Monster Fight Club and NFT Web3 Ambitions in February 2022, so about six months ago. As you just said, uh, Crypt's involved in a lot of exciting projects in the past couple, the past year or two. Um, obviously, you talked about um, Girl in the Woods uh, with Amazon Prime. Sorry, um, Girl in the Woods with Peacock. Uh, Troy was Amazon Prime. Got confused there for a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, and no even worries. things like things like um, Dead by Daylight and the Halloween Horror Night stuff. Um, and what was obviously been happening this time, but what made the push to Web three in particular such an appealing thing for Crypt? 
Great question. I would say that I'm very enticed by the ideals of Web3. The ideals of Web3 are, hey, imagine if users and creators, right, or, or, or fans and creators could collectively own their IP, could collectively own their economic value in a world where economic value has been sucked up by eight to 10 companies. For YouTube and Facebook, that's like for user-generated video, right, where YouTube and Facebook, and are now increasingly TikTok, have this whole monopoly on, you know, basically, you know, user-generated video. And in the TV movie space, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, et cetera, you know, six or seven companies control the TV space. You don't get great metrics and understanding of how many people are actually watching your content. And the economic model has really changed in TV and film where you're not really getting a piece of the back end, right? The value you create, you're not necessarily receiving. And for Crypt, at least, I felt that was the case on YouTube where we were getting millions and millions of views and not uh, uh, because of the nature of the content and horror and what I felt like were arbitrary YouTube decisions, not capturing that economic value. And fans don't necessarily capture their economic value either, right? It's a consumption model. You know, collectively, everyone builds Marvel or collectively everyone builds DC, right? But it's all dollars going one direction to a corporation. So that ideal and how Web3 promised to change that is probably how I first became enticed by the space. You know, you can call it NFTs, you can call it Web3. Um, I think it's, you know, multifaceted and it really depends on the project. But the first thing that ever really excited me or got me to notice Web3 was that. Um, the first time I knew what NFTs were was NBA Top Shot in March 2021. And, uh, you know, we looked at it. I looked at it, you know, when I say we, it's like, is it me or is it Crypt? But we looked at it um, all of 2021 and probably didn't decide that this is something we we're interested in doing until late 2021, um, like October. October, November, I was like, I'm really interested in this. And then February, we made that announcement. <laughs> Okay, so, so, so it was a lot of the, um, the idea of kind of reclaiming your economic independence as creators, if that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and having fans and own, having fans be able to be owners and value participants in that economic dependence, right? Okay. Being able to have a channel where you can go truly directly to fans, because on YouTube and Facebook, you're not actually directly to fan, right? You're directly to fan as long as the algorithm stays in your favor. You know, these businesses were built on, oftentimes brands, you know, pay to grow followers and you got to pay to reach them, right? You know, every YouTube video or Facebook video you make, um, you're, you're, you're making stuff and your own audience isn't getting exposed to it, right? So you don't really actually own that relationship. So the idea of actually owning a relationship with the consumer and having not just economic independence, but shared economic value or basically, you know, being forced to be aligned with your community, uh, those are the ideals that intrigue me. Okay, no, I, I, I can I, 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 I can I can see what's coming from, um, but I, I've got to ask: um, with the monster fight passes, the things that were actually advertised and bought and sold by MetaMask, um, they were bought with Ethereum. No one bought monster fight passes. We never. No ended okay, no, which is important. Right. It's fine. I mean, I think it's an important distinction. You know, I really appreciate your time today. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me so we can have this clarification, right? And ultimately, we've made a lot of mistakes at Crypt. I personally made mistakes in this project. And while we're going to probably disagree on a few things today, Will, I think it's important to note that while I regret and own the mistakes we made in the you know Monster Fight Club announcement, we had never ended up selling those okay. packs. So we actually did pull back releasing anything for monster okay. fight sale. That would explain why the links and stuff in the Discord no longer seem to function, but it seemed to go anywhere. That would make yeah. a lot of sense. But no, the, the, the initial plan at least was to yeah. um, sell them uh, via MetaMask, uh, mm -hmm. which obviously uses Ethereum. And um, Ethereum is fairly infamous um, uh, uh, for using a um, proof of work system, uh, which is incredibly energy inefficient leading to a massive environmental footprint. Um, of all the cryptocurrencies you could have picked from, I know there aren't many alternatives to proof of work right now, but why, why go for Ethereum? 
Well, Ethereum is merging to proof of stake. Two of the three tests to merge Ethereum and have it go to proof of stake um, are happening now instead of proof of work. So it'll be more energy efficient by the time we perhaps launch a project, but there's no doubt. And I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that crypto energy usage isn't highly inefficient. The decision to go to Ethereum for what we would have done on Monster Fight Club and for whatever comes forward is based on how many users are there. You said, you know, there's not a lot of alternatives. We want to be where the people are. Um, I think some folks might not like that answer because of the proof of stake, proof of work issues, but that's the honest answer. You know, I think that there's ways that we want to better offset energy inefficiency from Ethereum. Like I said, the merge is happening. Um, we've looked into ways that you can buy carbon offsets for your actual own NFT project, which Crypt would want to do. And the fact that we didn't have these answers, especially the carbon offset one, when we launched Monster Fight Club, I think speaks to a lot of our failures in planning and failures in uh, how we released and communicated that message. Uh, was the vocal opposition of uh, many consumers or businesses dabbling in Web3 that you'd see um, dur uh, uh, during, the, during the time, maybe to the end of last year or start of this one, where everyone seemed to be doing it? There's a lot yeah. of vocal opposition from consumers uh, to almost any project that got announced. Was that something that you were conscious of when Monster Fight Club was being yeah, I was conscious. I was conscious of it when Monster Fight Club was announced. I probably became aware of the vocal opposition later than you might think. Um, you know, when did, I'm not sure when did By Daylight announced uh, the Pinhead thing or when that whole... That was, that was like October 2021. Yeah, that was the first time I was aware of the negativity. I remember that very specifically, and that goes in line with around October, November, when I wanted yeah. to do this. That was when the Boss Protocol stuff announced. Yeah, that, that was the first time I was aware of the negativity. Um, so I knew the negativity was coming when we released Monster Fight Club. We did not, I think, I don't think we either A, planned well for it, B, responded to it well, or C, took enough time to understand the negative sentiments that crypt community members might have and try to address them in our launch. And if I'm just being completely honest with you, Will, that's just, you know, I think that's just that poor planning, but that's also just some of the anxiety of when you feel really excited about a decision and then you see that perhaps community members not are just, and just kind of hope it's going to go well. Right. And I think we could have communicated much better. I think we could have paid way more attention because I knew it was existing but there's a difference between knowing something exists and really taking the time to pay attention to who's upset or is vocal against NFTs, why and how to engage those concerns, even if people don't agree with you. And I don't think that we, in the, you know, the run-up stage to announcing Monster Fight Club, nor in the immediate aftermath of Monster Fight Club, handled that well, and I feel regretful and sorry for that. That, 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 that is very respectable, and at least from the outside, that looks very consistent with how things actually span out. Um, yeah. I know um, uh, Dead Meat, for example, when um, yeah. there was a lot of pressure on, um, on on James and Chelsea to respond quickly. And has the backlash that's crypt that the crypt received because they're such as the Dead Meat tweets um, had a meaningful impact on the six on the success of MFC or what you've got planned going forward? Is it something that you're well, it definitely had a meaningful impact because we're kind of changing what we're doing and our, 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 our have pulled back and never released Monster Fight Club so we could give a way more thoughtful entry into Web3 and what we're building. And whenever we do come out with something next, have vast details. The carbon credits I mentioned to you are just one example of many of wanting to come out with a firm plan so we can show definitively how we believe a project that we're building speaks to those ideals that attracted me about Web3 of actual fan ownership and actual community line building and isn't just scammy like everything else. I know some folks will always think Web3 and NFTs are scammy, which I respect. Um, I think that it doesn't have to be. And I think the thing we did wrong with Monster Fight Club, which the fan sentiment really helped, is make us really pull back. And, you know, look, prices at Ethereum were way higher in February than they are now, like three and a half times higher. So instead of the fan feedback really did make a, 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 a I hope ultimately positive response because instead of just releasing then where prices were a lot higher, right? We would have made a lot more money. We felt like, you know, a lot of this anger is justified. Maybe we haven't thought our way through. Maybe we just, you know, went out a little quick with this release because we were excited instead of thinking through all the steps and engaging the community the right way. And that's why we pulled back.
And to speak to the James and Chelsea tweet, you know, James and Chelsea are amazing people, right? I'm very blessed to uh, have actually known them in person. And, uh, you know, it's something different about meeting someone in person. I've enjoyed getting to know you, Will, but I hope we also eventually get to, you know, share the same space. And I've shared the same space with James and Chelsea a few times. And to all the Dead Me fans out there, they really are wonderful people. They're really wonderful people in person the way I think they are on the internet and with their community. So of course it's disappointing and hurts your feelings when someone you've worked with and like expresses dismay, but that's their right. And I think that that's completely their right to not want to support a product or want to speak out and say that they're anti NFTs or web three. I respect James and Chelsea immensely. And I continue a friendship with both of them regardless, right? You know, I mean, they can disagree with Crip's decision. I completely support them publicly disagreeing. When I've seen them in person or when I've talked to them, you know, hey, they're allowed to have their disagreements with me. I still think they're amazing people and wonderful people and would be open to working with them in the future. That is good to hear. Um, on, the, on, uh, on the topic of the future of NFC and Crypto TV's adventures in Web3, um, because everything seems to have effectively shut down, the link in the Discord no longer works, the link's taken off Twitter, the only evidence that MFT really existed beyond some tweets is the fact that the MFC logo is still on the Crypt TV Discord. Mm -hmm. um, you said, obviously, you've, you're you looking to um, provide the project with things like the carbon offset scheme and a bit more transparency. Um, what kind of product do you think you're looking to um, assemble at the end? Like, like if you were to unveil the shiny new um, Web3 pro Web project, what sort of thing would it look like? And do we have a kind of time frame for this? That's a great question, Will. And it's something that I'm going to provide the details I can now, but would happy to provide details for you again in the future and come back on. I don't know if you're going to want to have me back on, but if you do, I would come back on <laughs> as we keep, as we keep uh, fleshing this out. I want to mainly talk about a few core components before, you know, without getting into the nitty gritty details. Um, the concept of DAOs actually owning things and an NFT being a access to a DAO is a very interesting and important concept to me. And can we actually give some of our IP to a DAO? That's something I'm really researching and would love to have as part of the next project, right? Where ownership in the crypto NFT gives you actual ownership in something, right? You can give CCO, uh, you, know, you know, the common uh, rights, to a DAO, you can do that, right? Crypt has a vast library. You know, the idea of Web3 is supposed to be that when people have ownership of something, they want to proliferate it. And then if they actually proliferate it, the value accrues back to them. So I'd love, 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 love to give uh, some of our IP library and build a plan where our, we're actually giving some of our IP to a DAO and be progressively giving more and more Crypt IP to a DAO. And then actually progressively having something where folks can make their own monsters and the DAO either can own those or Crypt will just help the TV and movie rights of fan generated monsters, right? So how can we actually create a mechanism where we're giving our IP to people so they own it and are doing creative things with it? Um, and to me, DAOs are a unique structure to doing that, right? A lot of this stuff is like, why Web3, right? Well, why can't you just do that on Kickstarter, right? Why can't you just do that some other way, right? The mechanism of a DAO being an organization that owns and makes decisions that people can buy into, I think is very, very unique. And the nature of a smart contract that uh, you can't just reverse it and pull it back if it doesn't work. Um, so I would say that's a very, very big element. And I'm looking into, over time, tokenizing the process of making TV shows and movies. You know, um, I think that there's a lot of work to do on this, but you know, I do like the token model of how people can earn tokens for participating in a process, right? Most of what we've seen in Web3 is play to earn video games. And I think a lot of that's kind of, I was going to say rubbish, but then it feels like I'm talking like, you know, like UK, just because you're from UK. But yeah, but I, I'm, I'm fully on board with that 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's like a lot of that stuff is rubbish, right? Because yeah. they're actually predicated on you playing people earn less and less tokens the longer they play because more people come in and it's completely relies on people coming in to create value for the original players. Right. Yeah. And I guess in theory, play to earn video games could work if people wanted to buy lore and buy items the way they do in Fortnite, but that doesn't happen because these are not great games yet. Right. They're games that people are just coming into to yield farm. And a lot of people, you know, have really negative experiences. Right. 
So, okay, what could you do with a token that doesn't just predicate on more and more people joining an ecosystem, right? Well, Crips made TV shows before. What if we let people earn tokens for free, right? Or for a very low cost. We're talking like the five, you know, like, you know, five, ten dollars by participating in the governance of a TV show, right? That's an interesting idea to me. You know, I gotta fully flesh out some of these ideas. I'm probably oversharing now just because I like you and I'm enjoying our chat. Right. But that's interesting to me. And the tokens, I would have to say, they'd have to be capped, right? You'd have to have a token model where the amount of tokens are capped. Because a lot of these projects uncap tokens as a way to always be pulling in money so they can always just create new currency so more and more people can play and earn the game, right? That is very scammy. We'd have to have something where the amount of tokens you can, the tokens in the system are capped. You earn them by participating. And Crypt buys and burns our own token with potentially profits from making the show and selling it to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, whatever. We're a long way away from doing this. And we need to build all this stuff before we release something. But if you're asking definitively, how am I actually thinking about a Web3 NFT model that gives people actual ownership, that doesn't violate securities law, that speaks to things you can do on Web3? Well, I want to invite people to be part of the IP owners of the crypto universe. And I want to invite people to, particip uh, to participate in the process of making TV, right? And the whole idea of Web3 is that we, content creator and users, align build something and the idea of why web3 and DAOs is actually can share the revenue but that revenue should come from a corporation right it should be sharing the revenue from netflix buying the show or amazon buying the show right the issue with these web3 projects now is the revenue just comes from well someone else is going to buy this right and that seems very consumer harmful to me right oh, oh, absolutely it's, that's why the accusations of these things being pyramid schemes or ponzi schemes whatever sort of terminology you hear used quite accurately well, because, often completely accurate. I mean, I yeah. would say they're really more accurate than yeah. not, or, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see, I, I'm doing a little research on this, and the term I see often is digital landlordism, especially in the case yeah. of these NFT, these are Web3 games, where, yeah. where you get people in, uh, get them to buy in so that they can, so their only incentive is to get people below the like, below the rung in to well, help. That, that's what a lot of these games, that's, the, a of, that's what a lot of the play to earn games become. I'm not yeah. a huge gamer, so I've only studied the play to earn games as in why I think a lot of them have crashed. Yeah. Right. You know, and ultimately, you know, what excites me about Web3 is the idea of actually owning your value independence of the economic creator. It's not just randomly speculating trading JPEGs, right? Like I actually don't judge pro a lot of NFT projects are very open about, hey, there's no roadmap. There's no whatever. Like we just put these things out there. If you want to trade them, go ahead. Right. As long as you're being honest about it. Like, I don't know if I would personally, you know, buy that, but like, hey, we're trying to take advantage of the speculative, speculative trader market. What bothers me is when people say, oh, no, we're doing this for the ideals of Web3 and NFTs. But if you actually look under the hood, they're not, right? So I probably droned on a little bit there and probably overshared because sometimes I'm excited I do that. But I'm trying really hard to think about the ways that we can actually use our skill set of making TV around our IP of having sold it to streamers, of actually having an IP library, how can we use those skills to actually take advantage of the ideals that Web3 provides, right? Where people can actually have, again, very low entry point buy-in. Look at how much Ethereum's crashed. We didn't release this in February, right? Where people can earn tokens if we create a token model where they can earn the tokens for free, basically, right? And they get just rewarded for being a part of the governance and we figure out a way to redeem that token value because we're making an actual product, a TV show. Right. Long way to go, but I'm trying to figure these things out thoughtfully. And what I completely take ownership for, which you've alluded to in your questions, is when we release just like a press release and a little video in February, we hadn't thought through these questions nearly enough. And I take full personal ownership for that. And, uh, you know, I speak on behalf of Crypt and I do that. And I have a lot of regret for how we didn't have thoughts like this in February and how for um, we responded to uh, some negativity. Because, yeah, well, uh, uh, that's, that's excellent to hear. I'm sure a lot of my viewers will be in the same boat because a big thing I noticed from people from all strikes, not just in the WDI community, where obviously I'm a bit more finger on the pulse, but from wider horror communities, was it was communication problems. Like, yeah. I, I know obviously mass blockings on Twitter don't mean a lot to a lot of people, but to the people who it happens to, or, or getting kicked from the Discord, yeah. um, for just not knowing what's going on and being quite skeptical, yeah. it's it was, I, I, I think... It was understandable. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah, um, I have a lot of regret about that. And I apologize specifically to Crypt fans who got blocked too quick, who got blocked for expressing fair skepticism. You know, it completely was mass blocking. That was not an effective idea and strategy, and I completely regret it. That is, that is excellent to hear. I'm sure a lot, a lot of people will be will, will, will glad to hear that. Yeah, what I would say on that, and I'm not saying that, you know, I deserve necessarily sympathy, is that, you know, it just, it feels crazy when your phone is blowing up with negativity, right? Because even though it's the Crypt account and Crypt is a brand or a corporation, right? It's me and one other person who actually sit in these accounts and actually are, you know, uh, interacting and working on it, going through the analytics. So when your phone is just, dzz, 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 it's really a crazy feeling. You feel like the most important person in the world. In this case, you feel like the most important person in the world in a bad way, where it's all negative, 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 negative. And I don't think I handled that well. And I had never been through something like that before. For Being the main character of the internet for about 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, we weren't the main character of the internet. We were probably not even top a thousand, but it felt yeah. very big. You know, in Absolutely. this little world, we were the main character. And I stand by my apology for how we handled it. Well. I stand by my apology for the mass blocking. I specifically feel most remorse for the people who had been big crypt, bidden, big crypt fans who didn't express their distaste uh, of NFTs, disrespectfully who got blocked. Those are the people I feel I most apologize to. But it's a crazy thing, Will, you know, when you're just getting blown up, blown up, and it, 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 it escalates very quickly, right? It escalates from reasonable discourse to, you know, people in my DMs telling me to go kill myself very quickly. And even though I think in the moment I could have been more calm, I had never been through something like that. So it's like you start mass blocking because you're just like, oh, my God, we got to just like, you know, shut this down. Not because I'm mad at the people who are expressing reasonable disagreement or saying, hey, we don't like this. We don't support this. But because it feels like it immediately avalanches into something else. So that's something I think you can only understand once you've been through it. I think I'm better for having gone through it. Um, but, yeah, man, the Internet's a crazy place. I, I've oh, also yeah. never tried to be a public figure. So getting all that personal attention, I think I could have responded better. I, I I I think I think I think I think that's that's practical and understandable. I think um, I know um, we're talking about uh, reasonable skepticism when this when this when it, when it all went down because obviously no one knew what the hell was going on, and you yourself I know have been are known for your skepticism with a lot of NFT projects that you did. Yeah. I, I I and I don't know if a lot of people will, will know about this, but half of your tweets are about um, you being unsure about or. or concerned about 99% of NFT. So the other half there. of my tweets are about being bald. Absolutely. So we I, about that I, I, we'll do the I, NFTs, I, yeah. skepticism, but then bald. Yeah, I see the hat, by the way, very, uh, very elegant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, bald. I'm not trying to hide it. It's known that I'm bald, I talk about it. I just like these hats. I'm, um, I'm being blinded by the light, reflecting uh, that's in your skull. That's good. That's a good joke, I like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have a lot of skepticism and I think what I did wrong, which I've now said a few times here, but I've said it a few times because I feel like we did this wrong is, you know, look, you're running a company and you're trying to explore new fields and you're trying to, you know, buy into new markets. And when my early foray into Web3 NFTs, I'm just hearing the things that excite me. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of transactions. I'd be completely, you know, I got to be completely honest, like obviously the money that's changing hands. I want to build a business. I don't want to just build a business because I want crypto to grow. Like I want to take care of my people. I want to keep my people employed and get them job and get them paid. I've been really influenced by my negative experience on YouTube where, you know, the Birch 40 million views, we made like $1,500 in YouTube ad revenue. Right. So I've been really excited by the ideals I've been hearing about web three. I saw all the action and I feel, and I still feel very strongly about the ills of streaming TV as it affects that business model and creator power and the ills of YouTube and Facebook, right? So I jumped in to Web3 and, you know, you do a press release and you make a video because that's what, I, you know, that's what you always do, right? Like, yeah. you know, we've been in the history of Crypt of putting out press releases on deadline and making videos to accompany them, right? But we should have been more thoughtful about it. I should have paid more attention to the negative sentiment and I should have done more research just as a person about Web3 and NFTs and what is fake and what has the potential to be real, which is, I feel like I'm coming here with more answers today than when we released, but that's foolish. That's I should have had these thoughts in line in February. And that's where I completely apologize and understand a lot of negative sentiment. And then we didn't handle negative sentiment well. So it was a complete, it was completely could have been done much, much better. And I personally take all responsibility for that. That is, that is good to hear. And, and I hope whatever 
crypto ends up doing in the future shows a shows progress from that. And I have no, yeah. doubt, I have no doubt talking to you now that it will. And but, I'm very comfortable with people saying, look, there's nothing you can do in Web3 or NFTs that we think is worthwhile. And as long as you're doing it, we don't like it, don't want to support crypto. That's, 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 that's someone's opinion. That's fair, right? What I care about is that I can structurally point to why we're doing Web3, why I think it actually is a real idea with real value, why we're trying to innovate on the space and create what it could be or should be. And then in general, um, you know, we, we handle our communication better moving forward. And if people don't want to participate in it, you don't have to participate in it, right? But obviously, uh, I, I want to improve on the mistakes of February. That's good. Because truth be told, for anyone who doesn't know, I am a pretty big NFT skeptic by all accounts. I have yet yeah, to yeah. see, I have yet, yeah, this is kind of full disclosure, I have yet to see any um, NFT projects so far, key, keyword here being so far, um, that has done anything that um, could not be done via traditional Web2 solutions. Um, and But I'll be, I'll, also, I'll also be completely honest, aside from the environmental impact and issues like art theft, obviously CryptoV, you're making the art, you can't really art, like steal art from yourselves. Um, yeah. Of the environmental impact, I don't hate it. It isn't, it's like, as long as the environmental impact is not a concern, I, I'm not going to be the kind of person who will swear off crypt for life because I did NFT stuff so long as it's not actually hurting anyone. Yeah. But um, the reason I've been quite hesitant to support crypt lately since February and I'm going to be, and I know I'm going to with a lot of people, um, be worried about the environmental impact because using a steel foundry's worth of, uh, <laughs> of electricity to distribute um, what a lot of people will just consider it as JPEGs is mm. kind of a waste. I'm, I'm in a situation of I'll believe it when I see it. I think that's like a, a situation where a lot of people where there's been so many of these fraudulent um, or over-promising projects. There's just, there's, there, there's so much reasonable doubt as to what could, what, what could come of this, especially given the environmental impact, at least for now, is so steep. So yeah. is there, it, like, if, you could, if, you could, if you could say anything to people in my kind of position where I'm a bit hesitant about supporting crypto, especially um, mm-hmm. in the wake of um, sticking with, proof, with, with a for now proof of stake coin. What would you say to those people in my kind well, of I position? I respect anyone who wants to try to align the brands they support with bigger ideals. Obviously, I think the environmental stuff that we can fix as we, Ethereum moves off of proof of stake and as we buy carbon offsets. But if you're soured on crypto on this, I mean, I, I, I respect that. I, I wish you weren't, right? But I respect it. I don't believe in trying to tell consumers what to do, right? You have to make your value pitch. You have to market your value pitch. I think the best way to make or market anything is just to be intellectually honest and to try to build something of value. You know, we've made TV shows, right? The best way to pitch your TV show is to make something cool that has scenes that people want to watch or characters people want to buy in, <coughs> people want to buy into. So my message to Crip fans is more my apologies at the ways I think we handled things wrong, my specificity on what we're building for the future, and how instead of releasing NFTs in February or March, when you know prices were sky high and NFT volume was much higher, we didn't just go for the easy money. We took a step back. And obviously, prices are much lower now. Um, and I'm still here trying to figure out the actual intellectual solution. Because doing it right meant more to me. And maybe you think there is no way to do it right with NFTs. But doing it right meant more to me than doing it fast. And I am actually appreciative. I, I don't love the, you know, some of the internet discourse or some of the uh, eloquence of the internet discourse. But I'm overall appreciative because we stepped back, even though prices have cratered. I'm, I'm, I don't regret that at all because I needed to spend the time and crypto to spend the time to learn about these things uh, versus just having released those past. So I'm glad we stepped back. That is good to hear. At the very least, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the, again, I'll believe it when I see it camp, where mm-hmm. for now, again, I haven't seen anything that would, that would Here's the be best possible, company I've but I will seen. absolutely be paying attention, put it that way. Here's the best company I've seen. Uh, I can't pronounce it right because I have a mouthful of marbles, but Peggy, it's a company that, it allows musicians to upload their like you know their guitar solo or their instrumental to the blockchain and then other musicians can take those musicians samples 
and it automatically attributes what percentage of the song it is. So all NFT revenue or all revenue that's from those music goes back to those musicians, right? This is like an interesting company, right? Where why blockchain? Okay, because people can upload stuff and it's always known that it's them. And other people, your know, music space where people do sample and remix, right? But this way, everyone's getting credit for it and artists are always getting credit for it. And it also increases the ideas of collaboration, right? So I completely share your skepticism that most products I've seen. So that's a project. I don't know if you want to check it out or not, but that there so are projects that are taking advantage of creative collaboration and financial attribution in ways that I don't think would have been possible before. That is certainly interesting. I'll definitely be taking a look. Yeah. Well, I, I pretty much run through my question list and yeah. it's kind of coming to the end of the time that you'd lost it anyway. So should we just wrap it up? Well, you had promised me three ball jokes and you did one ah, with the head. Well, that was, I like that. So well, I'm hoping for two more. Well, I, I did one at the end of my last video where I put a picture of you and said, you've, you've, you've got more hair in the photo that I use. So does that count? Wait, 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 I didn't, I missed it. You got to send me the Sorry, uh, yeah, the, at, the end, at the end of the last video I made, I made, uh, I talked about the interview that's coming up. Is it on YouTube now. right now? Pardon? Is it, is it live or is it? Yes, the... yes, I put it up uh, a few hours ago. Okay, well, can then we ask the comment section to yes. make the best ball jokes? Absolutely, uh, yes. Um, I have no sensitivity about ball jokes. You can roast me. We shall, we, shall begin the, we shall begin the bullying Jack challenge. Um, yeah. I, 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 my comment section is very creative when they're thinking of mean things to say, usually to me. So this will be a, this will be a, 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 fun, a fun way I'll to- I'll give everyone one more ball. <laughs> ball it'll be a fun way to, to direct that away from me, which I'm, which I'm always a fan of. Um, well, I'm very appreciative that you reached out, Will, and I'm very appreciative of the chat and that we can have this thoughtful conversation. I'm sure you and me would disagree on some things, but I really just want to say I'm grateful for the times you've supported Crypt. And even if for you specifically, you feel like Crypt is not something you'd want to support in the future, I, I appreciate that you've engaged with us before. And I appreciate that you took the time today to uh, chat with me for your channel. And I appreciate you agreeing to do so in the first place because you had no real reason to do this. I'm literally a channel that's 1% of your size. Yeah. Um, if like, if you do not need my platform to get you out there. Yeah, but I mean what I said about how like, I regret a lot of the ways we handle community interaction. So, you know, this is just one step of many, but you also are reached out very respectfully and I appreciate it. Well, 